good afternoon everyone uh, let us start today's session so uh, today our instructor is dr rankit jain so this is the topic for today's discussion that is nave based tutorial so the agenda for today's class will be to understand first what is machine learning and then i will explain you in detail what is classification okay so which are the keywords we are going to discuss one is machine learning one is classification after that we'll come to the main uh, i mean i will say the main hero of today's uh, presentation that is nave base we will understand why we call it nave and from where does base come okay so let us have a good discussion over it at the end i may give you some glimpse of how nave based calculations are done and so this will be a short webinar where we'll have a good friendship with nave and base okay so today's agenda will be basically to be get familiar with nave base and to see its scope in machine learning so let us first come to today's first understanding what is machine learning right machine learning explores the study and construction of algorithms that can learn from and make predictions on data uh, it is closely related to computational statistics and used to devise devise complex models and algorithms that lend themselves to a prediction which in commercial sense is known as predictive analytics okay so i think most of you know that i mean right from our childhood a lot of us have come across weather predictions uh, right now most of us are using face recognition on our mobiles uh, where our mobile phones open up uh, when they see our face right also a lot of speech recognition work uh, speech uh, based chatbots we are using i mean in terms of google or uh, alexa or siri uh, we have been uh, coming across that right so if i may explain you basically machine learning okay they are a way to put or create ai is it clear machine learning is one of the method through which we will create ai that is artificial intelligence okay now how do we create artificial intelligence using machine learning what is the main criteria for it so the main criteria criteria for creating machine learning is data now this data may be in the form of numbers in the form of images in the form of text is it clear the num the machine or the data may be in the form of numbers images and text when this number images and text numbers images or text go into a algorithm okay the algorithm basically means what it is a set of equations okay and when you tell them that from this number images or text you give them you uh, you tell the algorithm this is you so all of you i have made you now very thin today so this you will tell the algorithm mathematically that from this number images text my area of interest is you will tell the uh, algorithm the same thing once you tell this the algorithm will automatically understand what is the relevant part i need to learn from these different forms of data number images or text okay so once this algorithm is trained okay this is known as basically machine learning so what you have done you have made a algorithm learn that from the given text from the given images or from the given numbers this is my area of interest please learn that 
the algorithm will solve the set of equations and get itself trained this phenomena is basically known as machine learning okay now how many of us want to become a data scientist here i think most of you want to become a data scientist right so the role role of a data scientist is to understand this algorithm it is assumed you will be an expert on this okay you understand you exactly understand what an algorithm is why it should be used when it should be used okay so a data scientist knows when to use which kind of algorithm okay so this is the role of us okay so now with this understanding let us understand different types of machine learning what are different types of machine learning okay so theoretically there are three types of machine learning algorithms okay the algorithms which are used for machine learning can be divided into three types algorithms used for machine learning can be divided into three types one is supervised learning we have unsupervised learning and then we have reinforcement learning is it clear to everyone that in machine learning basically the algorithms which we are using in order to train the uh, uh, train the algorithm with different kinds of data those machine learning algorithms can be divided into three sections supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning okay out of this the main ones which are being used right now are supervised learning and unsupervised learning okay now the question is machine learning suppose i make it simplified for you are two types supervised we are ignoring reinforcement for now unsupervised right now what is supervised learning supervised learning is so as i explained you before the whole art of machine learning is feeding in data okay input data we call it input data so suppose i tell that mathematically input data is represented as x okay and from this input data we feed it into a machine learning algorithm okay and it will predict a y it will give a output okay to make it easier for you all to understand suppose suppose you have sorry i'm sorry for this suppose you have made a graph which gives you a relationship between stock price and the date i think uh, i need to make a better graph i'll just do that suppose we are creating a graph that is between stock prices let me name the stock price say edureka has a share and we want to see the behavior of edureka with respect to date right 4th of november and we know the prices till today suppose these are the prices of edureka share prices some dollars right suppose we feed this data into a machine learning model okay it can be used now to predict to predict for next day that is 5th of november 6th of november suppose it can be used for doing that now how many of you are understanding that that if a machine learning model has been trained from historical data and it can predict the prices for tomorrow can you imagine how many how much money we can make out of the share market right we exactly know how whether the share the prices will go up or down tomorrow okay so in this case this is exactly what is machine learning now in this case
so so sl is unsupervised learning sorry supervised learning usl is unsupervised learning in this case you feed in the x okay and if your y is known you exactly know what i want to train the model on what what is my target variable or my output if that is known to you okay then it is known as supervised machine learning models okay and if you are you are feeding in x that is your input data but you into a machine learning algorithm but you have not told it what y i want you have not told it what y i want so target if it is not defined what will be the machine do the machine will automatically learn the pattern it will learn the pattern itself okay in that case it is known as unsupervised learning okay it is something like this that when we are small kid our teachers will guide us okay they will give us the why that you need to reach from year to year they will guide you at every step but when we go into college right we are just given input that all these things you need to do they don't tell us where you need to reach they will leave us unsupervised okay why because we have grown up we are trained now and we can handle ourselves okay now today let's come to today's focus the focus of today's class focus of today's class is supervised learning okay now in supervised learning as i explained you uh, again in supervised learning there are two types regression and classification what is it it is regression and classification okay today today we will learn about classification okay so first let me lay a foundation for you what is classification how naive bayes can be applied to classification is it clear this is what we are here to understand so this is what exactly i have explained you till now that in machine learning as i explained there are basically three branches theoretically but in general we use we tell that machine learning consists of supervised learning and unsupervised learning in supervised learning uh the target is labeled or the very the features are labeled anyways classification is the result of supervised learning which means that there is a known label that you want the system to generate okay so basically as i explained you x converting to y y is known here you know exactly what you want to predict from your x from your input what you want to predict is known in unsupervised learning we don't do that we don't predict anything we just say in this x how many groups are there okay so that's a technical word for it is clustering all of you please say it loud clustering so basically we do what given an input how will we cluster the data into different groups that is what we are going to learn okay in unsupervised learning today we are going to understand in supervised learning classification so what is classification classification in layman terms means what you have a set of data let me call that input data x okay now from this input data you want to give or classify that with an example suppose you have an input data of a person uh, say his bank credit score bank score you know that there are kessel score credit score a lot of scores are there suppose you give that as an input to a machine learning model and it has already been trained on historical data so it needs to predict whether you should give loan to this person yes or no okay so based on in this input what your machine learning needs to predict yes or no okay similarly when you do face detection suppose in your mobiles so if you put a image if you put your face in front of your mobile the mobile will learn your face and will take a decision whether it should open your unlock your mobile yes or no okay similarly if i give you three the say yesterday i was solving one problem where i need to say whether a banana 
is ripe, unripe, or overripe. So how many cat? So what was I giving to the machine learning model? My input to that machine learning model was a picture of a say a banana. Sorry for the bad drawing. Yeah, let me write it. Otherwise you will not understand that it's a banana. Now I feed it to a machine learning model. It needs to tell me whether this banana is ripe, unripe, or overripe. How many categories are there in this problem? Have I defined any category in this problem? Yes. Three categories. The key word here is I defined that my banana can be classified into three categories. Okay. So when this is a technical word, when you say your X input needs to be divided into categories or categorical data. Okay. Then, then in that case, in that case, it is known as classification. Okay. So basically when your input is to be divided into yes or no or say male female say into different buckets of fruits etc then in this cases we will say that it's a classification problem okay like is this a or b will it rain tomorrow the answer will be yes or no which animal is this? So we will have to define the number of animals. So it may be a tiger, lion, or a cat, right? Or a dog, right? Four categories we have defined. Is the transaction fraudulent? Yes or no? Right? Such kind of problems are known as classification problem in machine learning. Okay. Now, which are the classification algorithms? So now you know that which kind of problem you are going to face today. You are, you are trying to solve a classification problem. So first you need to know what are the tools or algorithms available in order to solve a classification problem. They are linear, decision trees, support vector machines, neural networks, kernel estimation and quadratic. In linear, again, you have nave base, logistic, and perceptrons how many of you are understanding these are different algorithms which i can choose in order to train the model to predict what input data belongs to which category okay today we are going to learn about nave base this is the thing we are going to learn about so what is nave base in short nave base Nave base is a algorithm used for classification. Or if I can give a statement, Nave base algorithm is used for solving classification machine learning problems. So if I if you ask me what is Nave base? For me, it is very simple. It is a probability based algorithm and it is a sophisticated way to do counting. Nothing else. It is a sophisticated way to do counting. Okay. Let us understand it with this example. Can suppose you are given a problem statement that I give you weather condition today. What is the problem statement? I am giving you weather conditions today and you have to tell me whether this is appropriate to play football. Yes or no? I am going to give you what is my input? My input is I am going to tell you the weather conditions today and you need to tell me whether it is a good time to play football or not. Okay. It looks like a very simple problem, doesn't it? But it is not a simple problem. Okay. It has a lot of layers into, into it. Let's see what are the layers now. Okay. You have been given an input of weather conditions today. 
okay and based on that weather conditions you have to say today whether it is a good time to play football or not okay it is a super and a other thing i told you key take takeaway was nave base is a very simple machine learning algorithm which is a nothing but a sophisticated way to do counting okay let us understand it very simply okay so now it it is not so linear problem right there are lot of ifs and buts now what are the ifs and buts let's understand okay now here if i draw a probability suppose it is summer okay the probability of playing football okay if if it is very sunny also it is summer and plus it is sunny okay would you want to play football in this situation would you want to play football in this situation that it is a summer time and it is also very sunny so how many of you would like to play football there the probability will be more towards the no side can you see this right so the the probability is more towards the no side so what is this dot showing it is showing probability okay i will explain you how we calculate probability but probability of you playing uh, on a given day when it is sunny and it is summer time the chances of you playing football are very high sorry the chances of you not playing football are very high and the chances of you playing football is very low okay there are some chances but it will be very low can you see this now monsoon it is monsoon now and it is sunny i am sure most of us would like to go and play at that point of time the probability of playing is high correct and the probability of not playing will be low why because if it is not sunny and it is monsoon you, most probably it will be going to rain right similarly if it is winter and your it is very sunny the probability of you playing uh you playing football is high now the question is how will you quantify this how now you need to suppose i am asking you a question please quantify probability that today it is sunny okay what is what is the condition given to you that it is sunny and it is winter time what you need to give as a data scientist i am asking all of you please quantify for me what is the probability of no what is the probability of no of no given the weather conditions are sunny and winter okay this is the question you need to answer so let me write this so that you understand okay what is the probability of you not playing football given the conditions are given the conditions are sunny and the other one is what uh it is winter time okay it will not be 0 or 1 it will have a value between 0 or 1 you need to quantify that okay this is what exactly nave based will do okay nave based will quantify this for you okay nave based will quantify this for us that hey boss today you want to play football what are the chances that you will not play football given it is sunny and winter once you quantify say not playing right suppose you quantify not playing it comes out to be say 0.05 and nave base you can also use to see what is the probability of yes suppose it came comes out to be 0.4 who wins here who wins here the yes wins here right so you will classify it as yes okay so the whole money is 
understanding how naive bayes can be used to quantify probabilities okay now this is not normal probability why this is not normal probability i'll explain you suppose i ask all of you i am i am uh, tossing a coin i am tossing a coin suppose i tell all of you i am tossing a coin what is the probability i will get head what is the probability i will get head that it is 1 by 2 right it is 0.5 correct so did i put any condition on you did i put any condition on you no i did not put any condition on you but let's think about second scenario that please toss a coin okay and when you are tossing a coin uh i will say that you know uh, you have done you have put a condition on the coin such that it will always or say the head side is heavier if i say what is the condition you have put that the head part of the coin i have made it little heavier okay something of that so some manipulation i have done now tell me what is the probability of head okay now tell me what is the probability of it so this cannot be answered straight away by 1 by 2 you will have to look into this factor right this is a condition right like in this case in this case what was the condition put on that that it is sunny and it is winter okay so if it is sunny and it is winter that's a condition given to you okay in that case what is the probability then it we will use naive bayes okay so naive bayes is used for conditional probability right so can you see this now there is a number here okay if there is a number here who gave this number we gave got this number from naive bayes okay so let us now understand how this calculation is made okay great all of you would you like to learn how naive bayes does calculation let us understand that okay similarly if i ask you the same questions today it is sunny no what is the condition today see so many probabilities are there this was for condition 1 of sunny this is for condition 2 that today it is windy okay instead of sunny it is windy then it is not sunny and it is windy okay and it is not sunny and not windy okay what i am trying to tell you is there are so many attributes or so many different conditions you can put so many different conditions we can put right so we need to understand based on this conditions how will our how will the probabilities change okay so if you see here if it is sunny yes and if it is windy yes if it is summer monsoon or winter all the time is an ideal condition to play football if it is sunny yes and if it is windy no then monsoon is the best play to way to play football okay so these are different conditions and using naive bayes we are just putting some numbers onto it let us understand now how do we quantify this numbers okay so for that we are using something called as bayes theorem okay so naive bayes classifier is a simple probabilistic classifier based on applying bayes theorem with strong independence assumption between the features okay so this is a mathematical formula this is a mathematical formula who gave this formula it was given by the great type scientist bayes so that is why it is known as bayes theorem okay so bayes theorem in naive bayes the the mathematical equation used to find the probability on conditions is given by bayes that is why naive bayes theorem now naive why the word naive because uh, if i can get little technical naive has come into picture because it is very the, the assumptions which have been made in order to do this calculation are very simple are not actually very realistic that is why it is known as naive okay 
Now let me just write it down for all of you so that you can understand it better. Nave base theorem or nave base is based on the base theorem for probability. Okay. The word nave is because it is assuming. So whenever you make some algorithms, there are some assumptions made. The assumptions made here are very simplistic. It is assuming very simplistic assumptions. Okay. That's why we say it name. And that is the reason why we do not much use it in industry. Okay. Are you... I, this is a little technical definition. All those who are new, don't worry about it. But those who know about it, I'm just giving you one extra information that why I'm not using nave base in industry because the assumption by which it calculates the probability, those are not very true to real life. That's why we don't use it. But even then, it does a good job. Okay. So now let us understand technically uh, what is Bayes theorem. Okay. So Bayes theorem is essentially where you calculate likelihood this is this part is known as likelihood this part part is known as class prior probability and this part is known as predictor probability so in order to calculate this part you should know these three things okay now this may look like very alien to a lot of you let us understand it with the example now okay so this is the table which has been given to you this is the table given to you. What is the table showing it? It is given to you. It is showing the historical data. Okay. The historical data given to you is that it is sunny. Okay. In that case, how many times did you play football? Three times. Okay. And how many times you did not play football? Four times. Okay, let us look at this one. Okay, let us look at this one. How many times it was summer? First, concentrate on this table. It was summer. How many times you played football? Three times. And how many times you did not play football? Two times. Okay, it is monsoon. How many times you played football? Four times. And how many times you didn't play football? Zero times. Winter, how many times you played football? Two times. And how many times you did not play football? Three times. Okay. Now, based on this table, which is the best season to play football? Obviously, the best season to play football, as pointed by all of you, is monsoon. Why? There, all the time you played football, you did not play a single time not played a football, right? So, monsoon is easily the winner here. And which is the loser here? Winter. Right? But the story doesn't end here. As data scientists, we need to quantify what were the conditions in which we did not play and what were the conditions in which we played. Okay. What were the conditions? We want to understand that. Now, in summer, I told you there are two conditions, sunny and windy. Right. There are two conditions, sunny and windy. Now, let us understand it in details. Let us understand it now with probability terms. Okay. It is summer. What is the probability of you playing? Suppose I tell you today is summer. I tell you today is summer. What is the probability of you playing football? Yes. What is the probability that given it is a given it is summer, what is the probability that you will play football? The answer will be what? 3 plus 4 plus 2, which will be 9. Okay, so 3 divided by 9. That will be the probability of you playing football given it is summer. Okay, so this gives you probability of... This gives us what? Probability of we playing football, yes, given it is summer. Okay, all of you please concentrate on this term. Right? What is the condition here? The condition is summer. And I am asking how much is the probability that given it is summer, I will play football. That is 0.33. Okay. Similarly, what is the probability of me playing 
फुटबॉल वेन इट इज मॉन्सून इट विल बी वॉट फोर डिवाइडेड बाय नाइन विंटर टू डिवाइड बाय नाइन वॉट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ यू नॉट प्लेइंग फुटबॉल वेन इट इज समर इट इज टू बाय फाइव हाउ डिड यू गेट दिस फाइव इयर यू गॉट इट बाय एडिंग ऑल द नोस probability of you playing monsoon or not playing football when it is monsoon is 0 by 5 probability of you playing not playing football when it is winter is 3 by 5 so what is this probability of yes here is 9 by 14 and probability of no is what 5 by 14 this is the complete probability right out of the four 14 times how many times did we go to play football Three plus four plus two nine nine plus five fourteen. So there were fourteen times we wanted to play football. Out of which nine times we played and five times we didn't play. So the probability of yes is nine by fourteen. Probability of no is overall no is five by fourteen. Okay. Now what do we want to learn? We want to learn that what is the probability of yes. when it is summer so today okay so all these calculations you have done now let us understand this what is the probability of no that you are not going to play football given the conditions are it is not sunny the sunny condition is no and the windy condition is yes that we are going reverse now that given a new condition that today is summer today it is given that it is a summer right then what is the probability of yes th that you will play football given it is summer so the answer for this will be given to you by bayes theorem bayes theorem says that if you want to calculate probability of yes given it is summer then historically you need to see that how many times you played when it was summer into what is the total probability of yes divided by the total probability of sum okay so this is what we will look into okay so we do this calculation and this calculation will be 0.60 so what is the probability that you today you will go to play football given it is summer the probability is yes the probability is 0.60 okay so similarly as i told you here here what is asked of you as a data scientist what did your customer ask that what is my probability today to play football given it is winter okay it is winter given it is winter the sunny it is not sunny and it is windy can you quantify for me with how much is the chances that i will play football yes or no or only for yes okay so for that the formula we use the bayes theorem which is p of winter divided by s into p of sunny equal to no divided by s this is conditional probability from previous data similarly this into p of s into p of winter into p of sunny no into p of windy yes so i am not going into the details of it you can have a look you just need to fill this numbers and it will give you a number so now you have quantified it based on bayes theorem that the probability of me playing that today it is sunny and it is windy and it is a winter time is 0.623 okay a quantification is is done okay so this is how you calculate for different conditions in your data set what are the probabilities using naif base now it is very simple once you calculate that so suppose probability of yes you playing football when it is summer is how much say 0.6 and probability of no when you playing of you not playing football when it is summer is say 0.4 who wins here it is yes so your machine learning model will say yes that today is a good time to play football okay today is a good time to play football let us also do one more calculation what is the probability of you finding king in a deck of cards is 4 by 52 it is equal to 1 by 13 so this is the probability that you will find a king of cards in four, in a deck of card is 4 by 52 or 1 by 30 okay similarly i ask you now 
that you are picking one card okay and that card is a face card you know what a face card is face card is j k q and i guess a also i don't know a i think a doesn't count as a face card so j k and q in your deck of cards are are your face cards so what is the con condition given to you the condition given to you that you have already got a face card that is known now what is the probability that you have a king inside it okay so we will do what we will first find the probability of a face card in which king is there to divide by probability of face into probability of king how did we get this we get this from base theorem now this we know probability of king is what 1 by 13 probability of face card is what how many face cards are there in a deck in a deck jack king and queen the probability of face card p of face will be how much every set will have uh, in a set i think there are four uh, colors right in four colors there are three face cards so total you will have four into three face cards divide by total 52 which will come out to be how much 3 by 13 right so using the base theorem what we will do we will just put 1 by 3 divide by 13 is equal to 13 by 3 so this will be our answer that given a probability uh, that it is a face card what is the probability of you finding king okay in that case we will find out using the base theorem okay I am I think you may want to revise or spend more time on this that is my suggestion to all of you okay now I hope the basics are very clear the mathematical part may require some more understanding or some more I will say practice okay the last key takeaway for you will be these calculations are not done by us these calculations of finding probability is not done by us who will do this it will be done by machine okay that's why it's a machine learning algorithm but what are we understanding that machine at its back end okay what it will learn uh, it will use it will use naive base in order to calculate probability and say or classify are you all understanding it the machine at its back end when you tell that please use the naive base theorem it will do the calculations which i just showed now just imagine if you have 1 million rows of data and here we had only two conditions sunny and windy suppose there are and there are more than 20 conditions humanly not possible to do the calculations who will do the calculations for us the machine will do the calculations and it will do it within split seconds okay so naive base is used when we have to do classification and the machine can do it very fast okay the advantage of using naive base is it is very simple method you see that it there was no complication here and also it is very fast the calculations are very fast compared to other complex classification algorithms okay great so with this i will end today's session i hope you enjoyed thank you all have a good day bye